Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Just chilling on the bed, not really wanting to make a video, and I just looked over at the 40 gallon and thought, damn girl, I mean, damn tank, <laughs> you're looking good. So, we're gonna take a look at it. So the tank that we're looking at today is a 40 gallon breeder, which is a commonly used and found tank where I live in the USA. So having said that, the aquarium itself isn't that special. The special part about this tank isn't even the fish, although that angelfish is looking awesome. In my opinion, the special part of this tank is that any new aquarium hobbyist could build and create the tank with the plants that you see here. There's many reasons for this, but the first one that we're gonna to touch on is the filtration. We've got two forms of filtration in this tank, and the first one is a sponge filler. This form of filtration, I understand, is not the greatest to look at, but in terms of cost effectiveness and simplicity, this filter is awesome. All you have to do to clean it is literally wring out the sponge and I've done videos on this so I'll link one of them above right now if you want to check that out. Another great thing about this filter is that it actually produces a lot of surface agitation which promotes gaseous exchange meaning there's more oxygen available in the water column for your fish to breathe. The other form of filtration that we're utilizing is a simple hang on the back. This is an AquaClear 50 I believe and this is where I house a lot of my biological media, as well as some polishing pads. The filter has worked an absolute charm for me, and if you are in the market for a hang on the back, I would highly advise an AquaClear. The one thing that I'm missing from this filter, however, is a little intake sponge, which will prevent some of the plants from getting sucked up into the intake. I do utilize one of these on the 10 gallon Iwagumi planted setup, as you can see there. And this helps to prevent plant trimmings from getting into your filter. And I also feel like it massively impacts the clarity of your water as this 10 gallon is absolutely pristine compared to my other aquariums right now. Another thing that I also utilize on this tank is a little thermometer probe. I got this from Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description for it. And this thing's awesome, it definitely beats having an actual temperature probe in your aquarium just makes it look unsightly and this just gives a digital reading of the temperature in your aquarium and it can just be stuck onto the side like I've done here. The heater that I'm currently using in this aquarium is from Fluval. Again I got this from Amazon and so far it's worked absolutely perfectly and I'll leave a link in the description for this also. Now going on to the actual tank, the rocks that I got for this aquarium were just locally sourced. I found them at a riverbed. I've also got some wood in this aquarium that I purchased from a local fish store that I previously utilized in my 125 gallon. But now we get into the real stars of the show in my opinion, which are the plants. The vast majority of these plants are all low demanding, low light plants that you could pretty much grow with a shop light. Anubias, Java Fern, Java Fern Windelov, Anubias Nana Petite are the vast majority of the plants that I've got in this tank. I also have a few Cryptocarini species scattered throughout the substrate and I've also got the Dwarf Aquarium Lily that I got from Aquarium Co-op in the back as well. All these plants though can be just planted in normal aquarium gravel. So you don't necessarily have to purchase a fairly expensive substrate like the ADA Amazonia Aquasoil that I'm using here. And that's why this video and this tank is just perfect for beginners. Get your tank, get your equipment, get some cheap sand like this stuff here from Petco or PetSmart. Get some locally sourced rocks, make a perimeter, put some Aquasoil or some pea gravel in that, use some root tabs if you want to, plant some crypts and then put some of your epiphyte plants around there in some crevices of the wood like I've done in this certain aquascape. Anubias, Java Fern, 
anything like that is just absolutely perfect. So if you're a new beginner into the hobby, or if you've never experienced planted tanks before, I would highly advise these plants and they'll work out absolutely awesome for you. And they'll look great too. I'm now going to feed the fish guys, so if you want to stick around for a little cinematic portion of the video to see all these guys demolishing some food, feel free. But that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you've found this useful if you are a beginner into this brilliant fish keeping hobby. Feel free to reach out to me, whether that's on Instagram at cichlidscape or through YouTube. Ask me any questions that you want and please do get into planted aquariums. They're not difficult to keep at all. Keep your lights on for six, seven, eight hours a day. Reduce it if you start getting algae. Make sure you're getting easy to grow plants and easy to maintain plants like the ones that we've mentioned in today's video and you will be good to go. If you want to get a stocking list of this tank let me know down in the comments and I can always make that in the next video for you. I've got some really cool fish in here all different shapes all different sizes from different parts of the world and it just really is massively relaxing to see all these guys going at it so please subscribe if you haven't already leave this video a like comment down below and we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching I'm